you cannot break all the chains except one. You cannot say you want to be free of exploitation and oppression, except you want to keep the oppression of women by men. You can't say you want to liberate humanity, yet keep one half of the people enslaved to the other half. The oppression of women is completely bound up with the division of society into masters and slaves, exploiters and exploited. And the ending of all such conditions is impossible without the complete liberation of women. All this is why women have a tremendous role to play, not only in making revolution, but in making sure there's all the way revolution. The fury of women can and must be fully unleashed as a mighty force for proletarian revolution. Baba Vakian, Basics 322. Welcome to the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. Today is March 4th, 2021. This is episode number 42 of our show. My name is Andy Z. I am the host of the show, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Today is a special show for International Women's Day, a show to join with our sisters and brothers and everyone from Mexico to Iran and every continent to join in celebrating the international holiday that is March 8th. International Women's Day. And this is a day where all who dare to stand up and say, we will not accept a world where women are subordinated, dominated, insulted, degraded, battered, mutilated, and even murdered to keep them in their place. Here in the belly of the beast of capitalism, imperialism, the system that has the oppression of women woven into its very heart of exploitation and oppression of humanity, on this International Women's Day, we declare in the words of Bob Avakian, unleash the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution. This is the spirit, this is the theme, this is the subject of our show. The complete liberation of women as a crucial part and more a measure of the radically new society we are fighting for through an actual revolution, nothing less, for a radically new and far better world for the emancipation of all humanity. We not only recognize but act on the understanding that the liberation of women is completely bound up with the emancipation of all of humanity, and there is no emancipation of humanity without the complete liberation of women at its core. Before I welcome my co-host and Sarah Taylor, we want to begin this International Women's Day show with a stirring quote that sets the stage for what women all over the world face today. That is in the first chapter of Basics from the Talks and Writing of Bob Avakian. And what you're going to hear is a dramatic reading of this quotation by Amina from the Get Organized for an Actual Revolution tour. Uh, and then she's going to be backed up by uh, the baritone saxophonist, Moist Paula Henderson. Uh, they were, did this reading at a celebration of the publication of the book Basics, and that is now a film titled Stepping into the Future. Look at all these beautiful children who are female in the world. And in addition to all the other outrages which I have referred to, in terms of children throughout the slums and shanty towns of the third world, in addition to all the horrors that will be heaped on them. The actual living in garbage and human waste in the hundreds of millions as their fate laid out before them. Yes, even before they are born. There is on top of this, for those children who are born female, the horror of everything that this will bring simply because they are female in a world of male domination. And this is true not only in the third world, in modern countries like the US as well. The statistics barely capture it. The millions who will be raped, the millions more who will be routinely demeaned, deceived, degraded, and all too often brutalized 
by those who are supposed to be the most intimate lovers. The way in which so many women will be shamed, hounded, and harassed if they seek to exercise reproductive rights through abortion, or even birth control. The many who will be forced into prostitution and pornography, and all those who, if they do not have that particular fate, and even if they achieve some success in this new world, where supposedly there are no barriers for women, will be surrounded on every side and insulted at every moment by a society and a culture which degrades women on the streets, in the schools and workplaces, in the home and on a daily basis and in countless ways. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Sansara Taylor, my co-host. How are you doing today, Sansara? Andy, I'm feeling good. I'm really glad to be here on episode 42. Um, I do want to say, just listening to that quote that Amina just read from B.A., it is so intolerable what women face. Being born female on any corner of the globe, I think you really, I mean, it's a very upsetting and infuriating quote we just heard. But I have to say also, it, it makes me so glad to be part of this uh, special episode on International Women's Day because we're looking at this honestly, the actual conditions and, and that should not be tolerated that half of humanity face, but also with the real sense of hope on a scientific foundation that this can be ended. We don't have to put up with this. We can break these chains. That's what International Women's Day is about, and we are going to bring that to you. We're going to bring that alive in this episode. So I'm I'm filled with a lot of joy at the same time. Okay, well, today's show, uh, we're going to be getting more deeply into the source of the oppression and the solution to it. Uh, last week, we uh, brought out an important point that in today's world, this is a powder keg, the oppression of women and the liberation of women. And things are very sharply posed. You can see it in this country, but around the world of all the different forms of religious fundamentalism on the one hand, and the fact that there is no answers to the uh, to the oppression of women within the confines of this system. And Bob Avakian in his pose, which we'll get into more, you'll learn who he is through the course of the show and what he's done, is his po pose today and that it's going to get either a radical resolution, either, either in a reactionary direction or in a revolutionary direction. And we spoke about this together in our last show. You can go back to episode number 41 to find out about that. But today we're going to be really focusing in more on, on the actual question of the oppression of women and what it has to do with and why it's completely bound up with revolution for the emancipation of humanity. So before we run down the whole show today, what's, what, what's in store for you, uh, I wonder if you would tell people a little bit about what we're planning for out in IRL, in the real world, and not just on the internet, for International Women's Day this weekend and how people can connect with it. So, look, we're calling on each of you to be part of breaking the chains and unleashing the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution. This is International Women's Day is coming up March 8th on Monday and all weekend, this Saturday and this Sunday and then Monday itself. We want to mark this holiday in the way it needs to be. So on Saturday, you can go to revcom.us and find out more about this, hook up with this. We're going to be taking this message of breaking the chains out to the masses of people, car caravans, other ways, post during all of this COVID safe, but out and, and raising a ruckus for the revolution on this question. Sunday, we're inviting you and everybody you know to tune into the, this channel at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm checking the times. I think that's right. And uh, 5 p.m. Central. There you go. Showing off with his time zones uh, for a celebration, an online celebration of International Women's Day, which will be really very good. It'll be here on the Revcom's channel. And then finally on Monday, March 8th itself, we're going to be out in the streets with political actions to stir the air, hopefully get in the media, and really, again, put this revolution on the map to arouse and wake up many more people and call on them to join us because we urgently need to make this revolution to break these chains. Yeah, I think that sounds, it's, it's really important. I hope you, especially on Sunday, I wanted to say everybody tune in and to the degree you can do this safely, uh, plan some kind of an outdoor picnic or an indoor thing with people you can be with and get some international food and celebrate International Women's Day and watch this show. 
But let's get into what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to start the show off with a commentary that I'm going to make about what we're doing overall with the Revolution Nothing Less show, what the movement for an actual revolution is doing out in the world, the leadership we have, and what a difference that makes, and then how the liberation of women is bound up with the revolution to overthrow this system and bring about a radically new world that would liberate women as part of emancipating all of humanity. So that's going to be my commentary, and it's going to lead into... The heart of this show and this episode is going to be a, a very important substantive segment of the Revolution Nothing Less talk that Bob Avakian gave um, a number of years ago. And it's going to be going into the question of how the oppression of women is completely bound up with this system of capitalism, imperialism, how this system is changing it, but also how to really end this oppression, we need a revolution. And he's going to challenge everybody, including the men out there, on, on this is your fight, too. It's a very important segment. It's going to be the heart of this show. And after that, we're going to show you a very brief film clip from International Women's Day 2020 in Los Angeles, give you a sense of the protests that we had. And we're, it's going to feature uh, Noche Diaz, a spokesperson for the Revolution Clubs. He's going to be speaking about what it's like and what it means for it to grow up female as well as male in this society and why we really can't tolerate any more generations going through what people go through in this society. And then... And then the final uh, main segment of our show, we have one thing at the end Andy will tell you about as well, but the final main segment is really, you've been lied to, okay? You've been lied to about the history of communism. You've been lied to about how emancipatory the first communist revolutions were, including on breaking the chains on women and how this has laid the foundation. And BA has done the work on this foundation to chart a path to go even further in breaking all of these chains. And so we're going to bring on, this will be a really, I think, a very exciting segment to bring on two members of the Get Organized for an Actual Revolution Tour who have been digging into and learning about this buried and much maligned history. And they're going to come on, and I'm going to talk with them. They'll share some of what they've been learning. And the hope with that, and I expect it will be the case, is that it not only will lift your sights, but it'll make you want to learn more about this as well. And we'll continue that as we go forward in this show. Yeah, and then you'll, it also leads to the fact that Bob Avakian has advanced the science and theory of revolution, including on this question and how uh, building on those achievements and uh, learning from the eras of that period, we can do far better the next time, which is a time that needs to come soon. Um, but the last thing, it's not a but, the last thing of the show is a special treat. There's a song by the revolutionary rock band Outer National called Free Women, and we're going to be playing that at the end of the show. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful video and a, a beautiful and important song. Uh, so that's our show, and I guess I'll just get right to the commentary. I want to begin today's commentary with a special welcome to our new viewers. You're in the right place. There is nothing else like the RNL Revolution, Nothing Less show, because this is a show that is about bringing to you the understanding that is challenging you to confront the reality that this system we live under is destroying lives and spirits and is hurtling humanity to the brink of possible extinction. Most of all, we bring to you that there is a way out of this deadly madness through revolution. And the road to knowing that, to acting on that understanding, to preparing for the time when a revolution could actually be made here and won in the belly of the beast has been charted by the revolutionary leader, Bob Avakian. In fact, for most of today's commentary, I'm going to leave it to Bob Avakian in the film of his seminal talk, B.A. Speaks, Revolution, Nothing Less, from which we take the name of this show. But first, I want to acknowledge all of our viewers who have been spreading the word of the RNL show this second season, where our viewership, while still way too small, has been going up every week. And we need everyone with a heart for humanity to spread the word of this show every week. The second season, which began four weeks ago, we've been digging into and featuring a New Year statement by Bob Avakian, a new year, the urgent need for a radically new world, for the emancipation of all humanity. This is an orientation for the whole period ahead. The reality that with the election of Biden and the removal of the Trump-Pence fascist regime from the presidency, we have only bought time. And that time must not be squandered but utilized 
to prepare for the great challenge and the urgent necessity of a revolution to bring it to being a new socialist society on the road to real emancipation. And we are also featuring this season the article on Revcom.us, Bob Avakian for the Liberation of Black People and the Emancipation of All Humanity. This article brings alive that a defining part of the life and the work of Bob Avakian has been the liberation of black people from centuries of oppression and the understanding of how this relates to and is a crucial driving force in the communist revolution to finally abolish every form of oppression and exploitation everywhere. And so it is, too, with why we are featuring today a special show on the liberation of women and the emancipation of humanity. Running through all of this, the political moment of post-Trump, the oppression of women, of black people, and all the other forms of oppression and exploitation that humanity suffers from all over the world under this system is the urgent need for you to become a part of fighting for more people to get with this revolution and to become followers of B.A. Bob Avakian. For you, for the masses of people to really get free, we need to be guided by the following two points. Number one, this system of capitalism imperialism is a source of endless horrors for the majority of people in this country and all around the world, and it is increasingly threatening the very existence of humanity. We are actively working for an actual revolution to bring down, to overthrow, and to completely abolish this whole system as soon as possible and to replace it with something radically different and much better, a new society built on an entirely different foundation. That and nothing less is what is needed. So that is what we are all about. And we have the necessary scientific method, the plan, the strategy, and the leadership to succeed in this. But there aren't enough people committed to this yet. So this is what you need to be about. Anything else will completely fail to deal with the root of the problems or to lead to the actual solution. Given the situation facing humanity, we don't have time to waste. So we need to get busy working for this revolution in an organized way and winning more and more people to do the same. Number two, we are followers of B.A. And you need to become followers of B.A. too. He's an old white guy, yes. Deal with it. He's providing ongoing leadership for this revolution, and he has a whole body of work that contains the scientific method to analyze the problem and the solution, the strategy for the revolution to bring down this system, and the vision and concrete plan for that radically different and far better society on the road to the emancipation of all humanity from every form of oppression and exploitation, and to enable humanity to become fit caretakers of the earth. He's even written a constitution that concretely maps out what to do starting right after the seizure of power so we can actually work on building up that whole new emancipating society. There never has been a leader like this in this country, and there is no other leader like this in the world now. We cannot afford not to follow this leadership if we ever want to get free and put an end to this madness. These two points run through what we do on this, the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show. More, they are how the Revcoms are stepping out to people everywhere, provoking, challenging, inspiring, engaging, and organizing people out in the world, yes, applying safe COVID practices, and online. So you can go to Revcom.us to find out what the, we, the Revcoms, are doing and to find out how you can connect with it. International Women's Day 2021 needs to be celebrated with the content and the spirit of unleashing the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution. It must be imbued with the passion and the urgency that these times demand. From the very beginning, the full emancipation of women has been a core element of Marxism. It's been integral to the science of revolution, the science of communism, and the struggle for the revolution that must lead. The genuine socialist revolutions of the 20th century were led by communists, first in Russia in 1917, 
and then in China from 1949 to 1976. And these revolutions led to unparalleled advances in women, casting off millennia of stifling traditional thinking and laws and customs that forced women into subordinate and enslaving relations. Women stepped into the revolution in big ways. In China, during the Cultural Revolution from 1966 to 1976, women were a crucial part of the unprecedented great swirl of struggle to prevent the restoration of capitalism, which unfortunately came to be when reactionaries staged a counter-revolution when Mao Zedong died in 1976, which resulted in China being transformed into the capitalist imperialist country it is today with all the misery that is brought to many of the masses of people in China and with tremendous impact on the world as a whole. In his New Year's statement, Bob Avakian, on the basis of decades of serious work, writes that these first actual socialist societies that were forged through the leadership of communist revolutionaries, first, as I said, in the Soviet Union and then in China, before capitalism was restored in each country, first in the Soviet Union in the 1950s and then in China, as I said after the death of Mao, that this first experience of socialism was mainly, and in the case of China, overwhelmingly positive, while secondarily there have been also significant and in some cases serious and even grievous errors. At the same time, the new communism developed by Baba Vakin is a continuation of but also represents a qualitative leap beyond, and in some important ways, a real break with communist theory as it has been developed previously. A key part of the new communism and the struggle for the complete emancipation of women is this, quote, the struggle for the complete emancipation of women will be a crucial part of the final revolution. In other words, it will be a crucial component in propelling and driving forward not only the revolutionary struggle to overthrow the rule of capitalism, imperialism, but to continue the revolution within the new socialist society itself in order to advance on the road toward the final aim of communism, end quote. The first stage of communist revolution and its achievements and shortcomings is something that anyone who aches for fundamental change needs to know the truth about. And everyone who yearns and burns for a radically new world that will liberate women and all people who suffer from gender oppression as part of the great struggle to emancipate all of humanity needs to see how that science has been taken further in some critical ways, qualitatively further, in this realm as well as overall by the work being done by Baba Vakin over these past decades. So go to Revcom.us as soon as you finish watching today's show and get into the section on the homepage of our website on International Women's Day. And then let that be an introduction to Bob Avakian's work, including how developments in revolutionary communist understanding and theory on the liberation of women is critical to the emancipation of all humanity. Today we want to introduce you to this with a substantive selection from the film B.A. Speaks, Revolution Nothing Less, from which we take our name, where he digs into how the oppression of women is bound up with this system we live under and how the struggle for the complete liberation of women can and must be a driving force for revolution. Now earlier I spoke to the fact that the division of society into masters and slaves, into different classes, developed together with the oppression of women. And these were very tightly bound together in their historical development and have remained so throughout the course of history since that time through different kinds of societies. And today we can see the ways in which the oppression of women, not just in a particular country, but on a world scale, continues to feed the functioning of this capitalist imperialist system. Not only, as I pointed out, is it highly profitable in the billions and billions of dollars to oppress women in sex trafficking, prostitution, and pornography, but also the backward conditions that are maintained and enforced by the functioning and the military power of the imperialist countries throughout the third world 
lead to a situation where many women are outcast and desperate and highly vulnerable to being exploited in this vast network of sweatshops that is at the foundation of imperialist capital in the world today. You know, I think of the phenomenon of people standing in line for the latest gadget from Apple. And I have to say, it makes me mad. I say to myself, what the fuck is the matter with you people? You can stand in line overnight for the latest gadget from Apple, but you can't stand up to oppose wars and torture and mass incarceration and the degradation of women. What the hell is the matter with you people? Now, to be clear, those people standing in line are not the enemy. But what is represented by Apple, and not just Apple unto itself, but the whole system and the network of exploitation that Apple is a part of and enmeshed in, is what needs to be swept aside. I mean, when you're at the end of the food chain in a country like this, living parasitically, even if you're not in the ruling class, off of people all over the world, once again, sometimes all this can be hidden from you. You do not see the blood and the bones, the worn down fingers and other body parts of particularly women who are working in the plants in places like China, making the components that go into the Apple products and all these other things under horrific conditions. You do not see the people in Bangladesh making many of the clothes that you're wearing. And when you leave here and go home tonight, look in your closet and see how many uh, of your clothes you can find are not made in the third world. And you can be sure if they are made in places like Bangladesh, Haiti, Pakistan, or whatever, that they're made through a lot of child labor and in any case, extreme conditions of sweatshop exploitation. But we do not, the, the products don't come with this stamped on them. You don't pick up an iPhone, press a button, and the blood of the women who made it comes gushing out. But it's there, even though you can't see it. And imperialism feasts on this. Don't let them fool you with their talk about microloans. Let's have some microloans for poor women in the third world so they can set up a business and exploit other women and then in their large numbers fail anyway. This is not what the imperialist system is doing. This is a tiny countercurrent to the massive exploitation on which of these very kinds of women on which this system rests. And look at this country. Not only is there the great value to imperialist capital of super exploitation of women in the third world. But in this country, it's a fact that the social relations that oppress women are critical for holding together this whole oppressive system, which has historically evolved with male domination, a key foundation of the whole system, a foundation stone built into its whole structure. Think about the family and how people re live and reproduce in this society. Everything in this society is based on commodity production and exchange. You don't have little groups of people all making overwhelmingly the things they need and then using them themselves. There's vast networks of exploitation in this country, but increasingly in other parts of the world producing all these things. And then you have to get some means by working in some way or other to have the basis of, uh, to have the commodity money to go buy these things. That's the way the economy works. And all of it gets funneled through the, what these reactionaries are always reminding us is the basic unit and cell of this society, the family. And the whole family has evolved historically with women being subordinate to men and having as one part of that, the prime responsibility for the domestic aspect of things, including the rearing of children and things like just doing the everyday work of the house. And there have been some changes in this society. More women in the professions, more women going to college, more women working in a lot of ways. And all this has put tremendous strains on these oppressive relations, 
but it hasn't broken them because this system cannot do without these relations. And so you have this tremendous potential eruption where these, the changes in the economy are straining against the limitations of the oppression of women and other exploitative and oppressive relations, but the system cannot do without them. Now, as one illustration of this, I was reading an article in the New York Times about a phenomenon in the South where some of these men who had fairly good paying industrial jobs, once again the phenomenon, the companies closed down, move the, play, move the factories away, the men are out of work, the women are going out and getting the jobs and service and whatever that are available to them that they can get, but the men are largely sitting on their couches, drinking their beer and moping. And one of the author of this article asked one of these men, well, why don't you go out and get one of these jobs that these women are doing? He said, no, I, I can't do that. It's not man's work. I just wouldn't feel like a man if I had a job like that. This captures a lot about the contradictions of this system and how it's intensifying. And in reading this, I was thinking about what Engels wrote in The Origin of the Family, Private Property in the State and talking about the Roman Empire, Engels, who along with Marx, founded the communist movement. He was talking about agriculture in the declining period of the Roman Empire that had been based on slave plantations called latifundia. But as the Roman Empire went into decline, the plantations, the slave plantations, the latifundia became less and less profitable. And so they broke down and people had to go back into small-scale farming but all of the former slave owners, or almost all of them, wouldn't go back and do actual farm work, even though the plantations were no longer profitable, because they considered it beneath their dignity to do that kind of work. And Engels pointed out, this contributed to the decline and weakening of Rome and made it more and more vulnerable to the barbarians that were increasingly at the gate and battering at the gate. And I was thinking about these men saying, I can't do that. It's not man's work. It doesn't make me feel like a man. How this represents a straining of the changes have brought about, straining against the oppressive relations. And I was thinking about how in parallel to Rome, how this could also contribute to the further declining and weakening of this oppressive system and make it more vulnerable to the barbarians, namely us. Now, the oppression of women and all the horrors bound up with it can be ended and something radically different and emancipating brought into being. Now, let's be honest, to many, especially many women, this may not seem possible and frankly, hard to believe. But that is not only because of the way things are now and the way so many men act so much of the time but more fundamentally, because of the way things are now, sets a certain framework and tone for people's thinking. Because the possibility of radical change cannot be seen to the degree that our vision and our sense of reality and of possibility is still confined within, conditioned by, and filtered through the dominating relations that are, that are at the foundation of this whole system. And the traditions, values, ways of being and of thinking that constantly pour forth from and serve to perpetuate this system that we are forced to live under. In this way, they get us twice. Their system embodies and enforces all this horrific oppression and it has people believing that this cannot be done away with. But the truth, which they try every way to keep people from seeing, is that we can be rid of this horrific oppression. But we can't do this by accepting the terms of this system or any part of its oppression. We can't do it half-stepping and halfway. That is why Basics 322 makes it very clear. You cannot break all the chains except one. 
You cannot say you want to be free of exploitation and oppression, except you want to keep the oppression of women by men. You can't say you want to liberate humanity, yet keep one half of humanity enslaved to the other half. The oppression of women is completely bound up with the division of society into masters and slaves, exploiters and exploited, and the ending of all such conditions is impossible without the complete liberation of women. All this is why women have a tremendous role to play, not only in making revolution, but in making sure there is all the way revolution. The fury of women can and must be fully unleashed as a mighty force for proletarian revolution. And as this statement is also emphasizing, the fight against the oppression of women and for all the way revolution is not just their fight. It is a fight that must be fully and vigorously taken up by men as well, by everyone who really wants to see an end to this system and all the horrors it means for the masses of humanity. Everyone who wants to see an end to the long night in which humanity has been divided into masters and slaves, exploiters and exploited, who wants to see a dawning of a new day for humanity. The only people who should fear and not join in with this unleashed fury of women are those who have a real stake in this system and want to keep it going with everything it does to people.
So that was Noche Diaz from International Women's Day 2020 in Los Angeles. And next, Sansara? Next, we're going to go to the interview I did with these members of the Revolution Club on what's been accomplished in the communist revolutions of the past. But to set that up, we're going to share a short clip from Bob Avakian from a 2003 speech where he invites the audience to imagine what a different world with a revolution could be like. This part is dealing with the question of the culture. Let's go to that first. Imagine if we had a whole different art and culture. Come on, enough of this bitches and hoes and SWAT teams kicking down doors. Enough of this get low bullshit. And how come it's always the women that have to get low? We already, we already have a situation where the masses of women and the masses of people are pushed down and held down low enough already. It's time for us to get up and get on up. Imagine if we had a society where there were a culture that, yes, was lively and full of creativity and energy and, yes, rhythm and excitement, but at the same time, instead of degrading people, lifted us up. Imagine if it gave us a vision and the reality of what it means to make a whole different society and a whole different kind of world. Imagine if it laid out the problems for people in making this kind of world and challenged them to take up these problems. Imagine if art and culture too, movies, songs, television, everything, challenge people to think critically, to look at things differently, to see things in a different light, but all pointing toward how can we make a better world. Imagine if the people who created art and culture were not just a few handfuls of people, but all the masses of people with all their creative energy unleashed, and the time were made for them to do that and for them to join in with people who are more full-time workers and creators in the, in the realm of art and culture, to bring forward something new that would challenge people, would make them think in different ways, that would make them be able to see things critically and from a different angle, and would help them to be uplifted and help them to see their unity with each other and with people throughout the world in putting an end to all the horrors that we're taught are just the natural order of things. Imagine all that. This is not some kind of fantasy I'm talking about. This is what's been done in socialist societies. It's what's been done in the Soviet Union, even more so in China in the time when our class, the proletariat, held power. This is what's been done in these spheres and every other part of society. Yes, we're going to have laws and a constitution in socialist society to protect the people, to protect their interests, and to protect their rights. But more than that, we're going to rely on the people. We're going to bring forward the people. We're going to enable them to wrangle with things and to thrash things out themselves collectively. We're going to lead them to, ch to challenge everything, to transform everything, to bring into being this whole new world and to do it together with the people of the world. And what I'm, what I'm talking about, again, is not a fantasy. These are the things that have been done in the socialist societies that have existed, or they're the things that on the basis of that experience we have summed up and are learning more deeply need to be done. This is all possible. It's not some pipe dream. This is what happens when the mass of people rise up and take control over society. And this is what waits to be done. That was Bob Avakian in his 2003 talk, Revolution, Why It's Necessary, why it's possible, and what it's all about. And he ends that segment we shared with you by saying all of this that he's been describing is not just a dream. It's not a fantasy. All of this has been accomplished when the proletariat has held state power, or it's what can be accomplished on the basis of summing up and learning from that experience and going forward. So we're going to talk about this today, and I'm really uh, very happy to bring to you two members of the Revolution Club and members of the Get Organized for an actual revolution tour here in Los Angeles. We have Maya and Pros. Welcome to the RNL show. Thank you. Hi. Welcome to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, we wanna, we wanna have you on today because I know that 
International Women's Day is coming up, and both of you guys have, have done quite a bit of work recently to learn about the history of the communist revolution on this question. Overall, but in particular, looking at this question of breaking the chains that bind women. And I know that the communist revolution has been lied about, it's been slandered, this history has been hidden from people. So I think it'd be really important, we wanted to have you on to share some of what you've been learning. And I think it'd be helpful, maybe you could just start with one or two examples and we could broaden from there. Maya, you wanna start? One of the things that I want to talk about that really struck me was that um, the marriage law. And in one of the things that people don't, well, many things that people don't know, one of them is what kind of history uh, the chi China was coming from. It was a feudal system. It was hell for women. Women had no rights whatsoever. They were treated as animals. They could not divorce. The concubines, which are women who are, are bought basically into sex slavery, men of wealthy who can afford were able to buy as many women as they could. It's just like buying any furniture or as many shoes as, as you can afford. Women um, were, uh, had to stay in uh, abusive relationships. They had no rights to own land. And the first thing that Mao Zedong did was to implement the marriage law. For the first time in history, women were able to divorce. This, is, this was monumental, you know? Women had the right to land, you know? Again, this, these are unprecedented things that for centuries women had endure, endured these horrific uh, conditions. So that, that's what, you know, that's one of the things that stood out to me. Um, how about you, pros? Something that really stood out to me was um, the revolutionary art at the period and the revolutionary ballets that were being produced in, in China um, during the time of the Cultural Revolution and before uh, to, to influence in a mass way how all of society, how women saw themselves as a part of society um, and how all of society understood the role and the position of women in, in fighting for the change and the transformation of society to get people free from the old oppressive relations they were coming from. Um, and, you know, it's, it's uh, at the time they were in a situation where they were fighting a revolution um, against the old reactionary forces and imperialists. And, and you know, I'm talking about um, the revolution in China and seeing some of the art that was depicted of women standing shoulder to shoulder with men armed and in combat was just really powerful and striking. And it, it um, it's a real difference than, than what you're told some kind of a, a liberated position for women is in today's society, where you could be, you know, if, if, you're, if you're, you get these ads for joining the armed forces for the U.S. imperialists, and yeah, you can be a woman and you can, you can fight these imperialist war and die for them to oppress other women in third world countries, you know, to enslave women and children. But these women were doing something different. They were taking up arms to liberate themselves and others. Yeah, and I, I wanted to say also the ideas, right? The ideas were being chained on a societal level. I remember um, reading and uh, being struck by the fact that some women, uh, some young women were changing their names, right? They, had, they were given these, because uh, women were, are seen uh, still now are seen as fragile, as weak, and the names that were given were, you know, like flower and just, you know, feminine names. And they were changing their names to fighters, right? Fighters and strong thing, tr strong names that actually are associated mostly with uh, uh, men, right? Um, and so that that's part of the way, you know, actually being part of a campaigning and on a societal level to change the way women were seen as equal and full human beings. What, is it, what has it changed in, in how you've imagined the possibilities learning this? And, and what difference do you think it makes for people to, to find out about this liberating history? Yeah, I mean, imagine when you're faced with all of this, if we're talking about what women undergo in this society, being objectified and sexualized from a very young age, um, you know, everything from domestic abuse to forced motherhood. You, when you're up against that and you have no point of reference that things can be any different. And that's what, you know, that's what burying this revolutionary history 
um, is done for. But in terms of like going on a journey of research and discovery about what was done, it 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 unleashed a lot of like inspiration in me and a lot of impatience. But those are just some things that you know really stayed with me. What about you, Maya? I feel your outrage. Um... Growing up, I did see the oppression of women. I, I, I saw the oppression of people, but in particular, the young women who were being sexually abused. You know, it was so common. It wasn't spoken about, but you knew it was happening. And growing up, trying to figure out how can I do something. And the only thing that I thought I, I was able to do is actually help one-on-one -on -one counsel people who had already been sexually assaulted. You know, and then realizing that that's not going to do it. You still had millions of women all around the planet, not only sexual assaulting, but brutalized, being killed, being thrown acid in their faces just for being a female. And then finding out that that doesn't have to be that way, that things can actually change. It was just liberating. You know, in China, the prostitution within decades of the revolution, was eliminated, was completely eliminated. And women who had been in that, you know, who had been prostituted yep. were part of the economy, were part of challenging on a societal level to change the way people were seeing women. That was something so beautiful that I had not imagined that, you know, women had that capability. And then you see it in society right now, today, you still have prostitution, and the age has decreased. Here in Los Angeles, in South Central, you have prostitution. It has increased, and the age level has decreased. And this is not the fault of the women. This is the fault of this system that has condemned women to these conditions. And to understand that in the past, this actually has ended. Come on now under communism and we can actually do it again this time around actually liberating half of humanity that is women as part of liberating all of humanity you need to be part of this revolution to get to a world where women can walk down the street and never ever fear men not flinch for a second to think that you want you're going to be sexually assaulted that is possible, right? That's what we learned, and that's what we're fighting to bring into being with the leadership of Baba Vakian and the new communism, where we have learned from past revolutions, and we can see that we can make it this time around. All right, so listen, I really want to thank both of you for doing the work to look into this buried history, the, the actual history of the first communist revolutions in the Soviet Union and in China before they were reversed and capitalism restored, history that's been buried. And I want to thank you for coming on the RNL show and sharing this with our audience. And to our audience, I really want to urge you to take them up on the challenge to learn about this history yourself. We'll have some links in the description to the interview with Raymond Lada on the actual history of the communist revolution in the future. Um, some of the segments that we're sharing in this episode from Baba Bakian and and more on the revcom.us website and the invitation and urge to join the revolution to make this real for the world on an even greater level going forward. So I wanted to give you guys a chance. I know that in your digging into this history, there was a poem that you found that really struck you, moved you, and that you wanted to share with our audience. So I want to give you a chance to introduce that, and we'll close out with a reading of this poem. This is... Ode to a Plum Blossom, a poem by Mao Zedong, leader of the Chinese Revolution. This was written in 1961, and our comrade Maya is going to read it to us now. Wind and rain escorted spring's departure. Flying snow welcomes spring's return. On the ice-clad rock rising high and sheer, a flower blooms sweet and fair. Sweet and fair, she craves not spring for herself alone. To be the harbinger of spring, she is content. When the mountain flowers are in full bloom, 
she will smile mingling in the midst. Thank you for that interview. It was um, really interesting for me to see how people who are coming of age right now and who didn't weren't alive at the time of these great revolutions and haven't had a chance to before now to actually look into them to see their initial response to digging into that history. And I hope our audience goes to revcom.us and, and, and looks into this and, and learns what was uh, the great achievements as well as the shortcomings and what's new that's got to guide the revolution we are organizing for today in the work of Bob Avakian. So before we go to our final uh, song from Outer National, why don't we once again just remind people of what's, what's up with International Women's Day this weekend. Yeah, I think, actually, hopefully everything we've shared with you through this whole episode has lit a fire in you to want to be part of standing up now and bringing into being a whole different world that's possible through revolution to break all the chains. So that's what we are going to take out into this world and to accelerate that process this weekend. On Saturday, once again, join across the country, or if you're on your own, write to us at Get, Get Organized for Revolution Tour to figure out how to get involved in your own area, to go out and bring this slogan, break the chains, unleash the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution with posters, with car caravans, with many different ways to stir the air and draw people forward to stand up against this. On Sunday, here on the RevComs at, on the YouTube channel, we're gonna be hosting an International Women's Day celebration. It'll be very internationalist, it'll be very revolutionary, there's gonna be culture, there's gonna be different segments, you're gonna wanna tune in. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell people on social media, tune in together and celebrate this revolutionary holiday with us. Finally, on Monday, again, go to revcom.us or at the revcoms on social media to get connected. We're going to be in the streets with political actions for International Women's Day to get into the media and once again raise this demand. Revolution, nothing less, break the chains on women. So all weekend, everybody has a role to play. Please get involved, spread the word. So to end this episode, Sansara, we're going to play the song Free Women by the revolutionary band Outer National. This was a song that was originally uh, provoked by the horrific incidents around the border town of Juarez, Mexico, right across from El Paso in Texas, where uh, immigrant women and w Mexican women were being disappeared and raped. And it was a horrific situation. And the band Outer National reimagined this situation, did a little bit of time travel to a world where there were free women in the world. And this is the world that we are aspiring to and need to imagine. And then we need to concretely work for today. So that's going to be the end of our show. I'll say good night for us tonight. And uh, we'll see you next week, Sansara. Yeah. And enjoy the song. One way or another, I'm going to find you. I'm trying to
These women and their little guns, messengers of a 